Welcome back to Community Questions. I'm Jeannie Debon. Um, for today, you're going to need a Pilates ball if you've got one, a squidgy ball, or you can use a cushion. And if you've got a band, a TheraBand, um, please grab your TheraBand now. So today's community questions, again, I've grouped them together, but they were all pelvis related. Um, I love the pelvis. It's one of my favorite topics. Um, you know, pelvis, such a hub. You've got all the muscles from above are connecting to it, all the muscles from below connecting to it. If the pelvis isn't happy, other people aren't going to be happy. So we need to keep the pelvis happy. So questions we had, um, let's see. I've got a tight left glute and IT band. So um, we actually talked about the IT band um, in the foam rolling class. Yeah, but we're going to cover that a little bit here as well. But please go back and watch the foam roller class because I do talk about the IT band um, in that one. Um, so how do I relieve sciatica? That was the other pelvic question. Hypertonic pelvic floor. And how do I stabilize my pelvis if I've got a hypertonic pelvic floor? Um, I think that was all of the um, pelvic -y questions. Again, I've cut, as I say, I've grouped a lot of them together. Um, so great, great questions. Um, so sciatica, super common. Yeah, so the sciatic nerve runs down from, um, from the, um, the back, can go all the way down to the foot for some people, this horrible, nervy, pinching pain, really, really annoying. Again, we have to ask why, why are we getting sciatica? You know, for a lot of people, the sciatic nerve, so the piriformis is, is a smaller muscle within the sort of the, the glutes. And for a lot of people, the sciatic nerve goes through the piriformis. And then the piriformis can get tight and it kind of pinches that sciatic nerve. And of course, that's really, I, I think that might be what's called piriformis syndrome. I'm not sure if it is a syndrome, um, but it's a tight piriformis. OK, so again, why have we got tight glutes again? Are they really tight because they present? Remember, muscles present as tight, but they could be weak. Yeah, so they're not just tight. They don't just decide one day, I know I'm going to tighten up. This is really important if we're looking at whole body mechanics. The muscles don't suddenly just go, I'm going to get tight. I feel like being tight today. No, there's a reason. And what I'm interested in is why. Why is that muscle acting like that or that fascia acting like that? What's causing that muscle to be tight? So why am I getting sciatica? What's going on in my pelvis? What's going on in my feet? You know, why am I getting this? Why have I got tight glutes? Is it because they're weak? Am I gripping a lot around my pelvis? And if I'm gripping a lot around my pelvis, um, is that impacting my pelvic floor? Why have I got a hypertonic pel pelvic floor? Um, again, I've got a whole class, a live class on here um, about the pelvic floor, a healthy pelvis. Um, so head over to the live tab after here and go through that whole class on a healthy pelvis. I think that'll be really, really useful. Um, but I just wanted to touch base on, on it here because you, you took the time to, to ask. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little exercise for sciatica as well, um, as well as helping to release, um, if you have got a hypertonic pelvic floor, you know that, um, again, I've had that myself in the past, extremely painful pelvic pain, um, can cause bladder issues. Um, can we look at our breathing? You know, the pelvic floor and, and the diaphragm have to work together as a team. And we know that many people with hypermobility have breathing pattern disorders, dysfunction. So am, am I breathing not optimally? And that's causing intra-abdominal pressure that's pulling up my pelvic floor. Again, I don't know because I, you know, we're all individual, but these are general sort of observations that we've seen so many people I've seen have hypertonic pelvic floors. And I think we try to use our pelvic floors as stabilizers. Um, I know we hold a lot of tension there. So how do we release some of that pelvic tension? Okay. Um, 
yeah and stabilizing the pelvis you know it's not just about squeezing our glutes you know that's not gonna give us a stable pelvis yes we want strong glutes but as with everything um, in the body it's all about balance yeah we've got to have balance of structures to avoid the sort of sciaticas pelvic floors tightness if we can get balance and i'm not saying that's easy you know but that's what we're working towards and moving in a way that promotes balance is going to really really help that okay so let's have a little play shall we around the pelvis um so remember pelvis is a big old structure big bony structure very heavy bones hugely densely populated with muscles and organs and ligaments and very strong tissues around there right so um we've got to treat it nicely got to treat it gently okay but it's a very strong strong guy so come and lie down um let's see let's just take a moment to lie down don't worry about getting your ball or anything at the moment um hopefully you can see me okay so let's take our legs slightly wider if that's comfortable as with all of these things if something doesn't work for you please don't do it listen to your body if it's not right for you then please don't do it okay but i'm just taking my legs slightly wider so i'm slightly turned out because that gives me a bit more space around my pelvis allows my tail to drop and allows my glutes to sort of spread a little bit so down here around your glutes i want you to invite the fleshy part of your bottom to just settle into the ground because a lot of us clench right subconsciously as a form of stability if you touch this you might find it's all it's tense so can you let that go and you'll feel your pelvis drop because if i'm clenching like this that's going to be impacting my pelvic floor right and it's going to be contracting those glutes maybe causing some of that sciatic pain so can i just for a moment just let it drop and again if you feel like putting your hands on your pelvis helps give you a sense of where you are in space where your pelvis is in space just put your hands on the pelvis and just breathe and again see if you can let the pelvis we were talking about it visualize it how big the bones are how many muscles are there the organs the ligaments can you feel that weight of the pelvis and don't worry if you're like no i can't that's okay we're going to do a little trick with the ball in a second that might help with that okay so just take a few breaths so when you inhale the diaphragm gets pushed down that puts pressure down into the pelvic floor so the pelvic floor kind of expands and when you exhale the diaphragm lifts and in theory that gently draws the pelvic floor up so the pelvic floor is moving with every breath that you take as well okay the pelvic floor is not static in fact nothing static in the body it's constantly moving and adjusting and responding always so let's do two more breaths remember on the exhale we're not pushing the pelvis into the floor we're trying to let it drop trying to release it and we're going to do one more good okay now keeping the pelvis heavy just slowly walk your feet back into a more parallel position check that your pelvis still feels heavy and then just lift one leg up and just give it a little sort of hug into the chest so this can help lengthen the back of the waist into the glute again don't force it we're not pulling it we're just gently holding it pelvis is still heavy and then we swap legs good okay now 
take your ball or your cushion. Now this one's a little bit too inflated, okay? It's gonna be a bit wobbly. So deflate yours um, so it's less round, okay? And what I'm gonna do is just put the ball under my sacrum, okay? So again, this is a little bit too high, so please make sure you've deflated yours. Okay, it's fine for me, but if you've not done this before, it's gonna to be too high, so deflate it. Now, my pelvis is tipped back a little bit. I've got a space here under my lower back. This has gotta be like lying in a hammock, so don't try and hold yourself up. Let your body relax into the ball. Now, this is a little bit wobbly, okay, which is fine. It's easier if it's deflated. That's another reason why we deflate it. Or if you're just using a cushion, put your, put your cushion under your pelvis. What this does, again, it's a great, you know, we've got classes in the Zebra Pub using this and doing exercises on this. We're not doing exercise on it today. What we're doing is using this to allow the pelvic, the weight of the pelvis to drop into the ball. Okay, so if you struggled with the idea of actually relaxing around your pelvis, see if this helps, okay? These muscles here in your lower back, they should be fairly soft, okay? So if you're like this and you're trying to fight the ball, we don't want that. Let your belly drop, let your lumbar spine lengthen and just breathe. Okay, so feeling the weight dropping through the sacrum. The ball is not in our lower backs, it's on the bony part of your pelvis and just feel it and see if that helps you get a sense we won't be here long of the weight of the pelvis and then gently lift up take the ball out and when you put your pelvis back down hopefully it's going to feel really heavy maybe quite flat maybe you've got a better sense of where your pelvis is in space. Now, we're gonna take the same ball, pop it between our knees, and you're gonna take your band or your loop band, and you're gonna tie it. You don't have to do it like me, okay? You're gonna tie that around your legs, okay? So you may need to sit up and tie it up, okay? If you can't lift your legs up. And I'm gonna double knot it here. So I want it fairly tight but not enough to cut off my blood supply, obviously, okay? So I've got the ball in between my knees, I'm not squeezing it, I'm just holding it, and I've got the band wrapped around the circumference of my thighs. So I'm getting feedback for the whole structure that's feeding into this very dense pelvis and my pelvic floor, of course, the inner thighs, come into the pelvic floor. So if I've got really tight, weak inner thighs, how's that impacting my pelvic floor? We don't know, but it's probably doing something. Okay, so heavy pelvis, just feel that. Feel, what does that feel like to have something touching the circumference of your legs? And then we're gonna just do a little pelvic tilt pelvic roll and we're going to roll it back okay and then each time you're just going to lift a little bit more so it's a progressive bridge again use go as high as you want to go okay but I'm just lifting a little bit higher each time now what we're doing is we're keeping balance throughout the structures leading into the pelvis so as I start to go higher, I'm trying not to squeeze the ball. I'm trying not to pull out onto the bands, okay? I'm trying to maintain, remember I said it's about balance. So I'm trying to maintain balance throughout all of the structures feeding into the pelvis. Okay, so nobody's working more than anyone else. Everyone's working together still standing into our feet of course because the feet are hugely contributing to lifting the pelvis and we do two more try not to squeeze it try not to pull away from it 
it's quite nice can be you know challenging but am i conscious of the circumference of my thigh because that circumference is feeding up into my pelvis and of course this is great stability because i'm kind of being hugged in place so my pelvis is very happy because it's getting all this information about where it is in space so it feels stable very nice so we're going to take that out you can just slide this off now slide it off and if it's comfortable you can hug your knees into your chest lovely now very slowly we're going to roll over and we're going to do one more thing which is great for pelvic floor okay we're going to tuck our toes under if that's comfortable for you again you can put your hands on a chair or something if you don't like being here to be fair we're not going to have an awful lot of time on our hands here we're going to be moving away from our hands so take your legs slightly wider if that's comfortable for you, okay? So you've got more space, pelvic floor has more space. And then think of widening the pelvic floor and widening your glutes to kind of hinge back. So I haven't pushed, I've got no pressure on my hands now, okay? How do I get back up? My toes are tucked under, so a little bit of pressure through the big toe pad, if you can, because your feet might have rolled out, okay? So see if you can maintain your big toe pad to come back up. Whoa, that's gonna activate those inner thighs. Did you feel that? Maybe it was just me, but I felt it, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna widen pelvic floor, let it go. Let your glutes open, let your sit bones open, soften your shoulders, take a breath. See if you can find your big toe pad, okay? Because all of us, our feet want to roll out, right? It's easier, but then we've lost alignment. Find your big toe pad. Little pressure, don't force, just a little pressure through the big toe pad. Oh, did that help activate your pelvic floor in a good way? One more time, hinge it back, don't push, don't push. Keep it soft, keep it soft. Let go of that arm tension, let go of that neck tension. Let go of that jaw tension. Ah, the jaw and the pelvic floor. Now that's a whole other story. But if you're here and you're gripping your jaw, guess who's listening? The pelvic floor's listening. So let it go. And now big toe pad. Lifts up the pelvic floor, lifts up the abdominals, brings us back. Well done. Come off your hands. Yeah, so many of us have tight TMJ, right? tight jaws connected directly to our pelvic floor so again whole body interactions is super key it's never about one muscle deciding i've decided to be tight today pelvic floor didn't wake up and go oh i think we're going to be tight now yeah we're going to just you know cause all these pain issues from now on it didn't happen overnight it's accumulation of lots of different things coming together and that's why I always say we've got to ask, we've got to try and find out what the, what's the why. Why did that happen? Um, so I hope that was helpful. A little bit of pelvic stability, sciatica, pelvic floor, all rolled into one. I hope take what you want out of that, leave what didn't work for you. Um, but I hope some of it resonated with you a little bit. Um, so thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon.